Okay. All right. So, welcome to uh, 1102, week one. Um, I posted an introductory sort of navigating uh, lecture for this class. I posted it on Friday. I know you didn't have access into the class until today. Um, but I think that you all received the email in your, of uh, my announcement when I posted on Friday. And so you had access to, um, the actual, um, lecture, um, to that lecture on Friday. So if you watched it, good. Um, some of those things that I'm going to, um, kind of like cover again, kind of go back over and stuff. Um, as we go through this, because it's just going to be naturally part of um, what I do, because that first lecture was just about how to like navigate the course. And now that I'm going to be talking about the course, it will naturally be navigating through it, and you will see me navigating through it. So, you know. Okay. So here we go. I'm going to share my screen with you, okay, um, so you can see it. Um, Real fast, just to give you some background about me, um, I have been teaching college classes for 15 years. Uh, I've taught high school. This is my 16th year teaching high school. Okay, uh, I'm very well versed in 1101 and 1102 expectations. Okay, so if you follow the plan, you do as I instruct, you listen to the things I say, you uh, read my feedback, uh, you watch all the videos, you watch all the lectures, you do all that kind of good stuff, you would be good, okay? Very good. So just, um, you know, uh, be proactive throughout this course. If at any point I say stuff uh, that you want more feedback on or uh, better understanding of, Please ask uh, if if you're in a live session, then like raise your hand. Theoretically, all right. Um, and I guess you can. You put the little you know, hand icon up and stuff, um, or you can just turn on your microphone and say something um, and say, "Yo, buyers, let me stop you right there, real fast. I got a question for you." And then you can ask. Okay. Um, every week we will have there will be lectures posted. I'll, I have. Uh, I have tons of lectures that um, I'll be posting. Um, some will be about the work. Um, some will be uh, older videos I, I pre-recorded that are that that you need to know, that you should know this information. Others will be uh, new ones. We will do a live lecture once a week. It won't always be on the same time. It won't always be on the same day. Um, that lecture might also be a. Uh, um, after you've watched all the other lectures, and then it might be towards the end of the week where um, you would then I'll be able to like go over some other stuff and then also answer questions. So like, for example, next week, next week, the live lecture is going to be on uh, Friday the 2nd. Okay. So like, I'm going to post some lectures. Um, for next week, for next Monday, the 29th, that you'll watch things that I've recorded, okay? And then we'll meet back up Friday the 2nd, and I will go back over some stuff and then give you opportunity to ask questions and all, okay, over that week's uh, material, all right? So um, you, we will both have live and recorded. You don't ever have to uh, tune in for the live one um, unless, you know, you like to talk. And you want to interact, okay? Um, so that'd be great. Okay. You are required to make sure that you always listen to the lectures. Whatever lectures I post, however many I do, if I post five, then you make time throughout the week to do that, okay? Because this class, this is an this is a sixteen week course that's cut in half into eight weeks. So there's a lot more to do on a weekly basis than normal. Um, but, you know, you can get it all done, okay? Because, uh, you know, essentially each week is like two weeks. One week equals two weeks, okay? So, um, yeah, there's kind of a lot to do, all 
all right? But that doesn't mean that you have to do like all in your room secluded, you know? You could, if you got a neighborhood pool, go to the pool and do some of this stuff. It's cool. All right, a lot of the stuff with the class is reading, you know? And so making sure that you are reading it because the things that we read, you will be doing in your writing, okay? So you can go to the pool, read, 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 take a dip, get out, read, read, read some more, dip back in, okay? So there's 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 all types of ways to achieve what you got to do, okay? All right, I'm gonna share my screen. I'm gonna go to uh, go throughout the course. Let's see. Yeah, I just share my screen, bro. It's right here. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm sharing the screen. Okay. All right, so everyone, now listen, uh, the good thing about the live is that, like, if there's any time where, like, I'm trying to show something, but you actually don't see it, you can tell me, okay? So, like, right now, you should be seeing, um, you should be seeing my home screen, okay, where it says announcements. It should say English 1102 summer. Uh, can everybody see this clearly? Like, easy to read? Um this is the first time we're using this program, um, this new WebEx program. So uh, it's a little bit different. Uh, Y'all are the very first time I'm actually doing a live lecture through this program. So uh, feedback is 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 good to have. And I'm gonna put y'all on this other screen so that way you're not taking up space. So if you see me looking to the left, that's because I'm looking at your names. All right. Okay. So when you Log on, you always make sure you read my announcements. Uh, I sent this announcement out to you on, um, well, let's see here, this was posted, let's see, this says posted May 22nd. But I know you, you got it, yeah, because I, I updated it. Yeah, this was originally sent out on Friday. You had the welcome lecture, okay, and the things that you need to do. Talk about how to navigate um, the course, okay? So always read the announcements. You will also get them in your email as well. Um, and then these right here on your left side are the most important things, okay? The syllabus, which is here and also in the weekly folders, as I'll show you. We have the syllabus, which is important. We have weekly folders, which is important. We have the textbook, which is very important. And then we have WebEx, which is where you, how you get to the lectures. I mean, I'll post the lectures, but there's also a link right there. So um, go to weekly folders, okay? And uh, the first thing we should do is get this list of assignments and due dates. This is like, uh, this is your guiding map throughout this course, okay? Uh, this course is pre-made originally a, uh, an instructor could be hired on a Sunday and then come in on a Monday and teach the course uh, with the already kind of pre-made. I go in and I personally, buyers, I change it and I make it my own, okay? So sometimes there are things pre-programmed in already, like in the calendar uh, uh, that uh, I don't want you to pay attention to, okay? Because the only thing I want you to focus on is whatever is listed in this document english 1102 summer 2023 assignments like the topics and due dates okay this is what you need to always focus on all right i have the whole the whole uh semester it's only on one page i have the whole semester right here okay and if you notice it's top heavy in the beginning there's a lot and then it gets whittled down majorly all right so in the beginning, I front load you all with all the important information. And then throughout the rest of the semester, uh, throughout the weeks, I'm just assessing you on those, okay? So here I have the week, week one, these are the dates, week two, the dates, week three, week four, week five, week six, week seven, week eight, okay? Those are the dates. We begin today on 522nd and um, go through the 15th, but really though, like you're done, July 9th, because this week I am grading all your final stuff. So you really kind of only have seven weeks. 
really. Okay. Um, our weeks begin on Mondays. Mondays, and they go till Sunday. Okay. The new week begins for me in this class on Mondays. All right. We have four units. Uh, we're essentially spending uh, a little time on each of those. Okay. So unit you know, one is short stories. Okay. Um, actually, this is a little bit wrong. This is this is unit one. So, I mean, these don't really matter to you at all. It makes no difference. All right. So uh, the sheet tells you the week and the lecture to the lecture topics. Okay. Now the week one is important because if you go back to here, okay, weekly folders. Look, week one, week two, week three, week four, week five, week six, week seven, week eight. These folders contain things you'll be doing that week, okay? So this week one folder, when you click on it, this has in it everything that's important for week one, which will correlate with all of this right here, okay? Um, this week, I'm talking about the syllabus. Class navigation, MLA formatting, how to conduct research, and completing the first assignment. Boom. Um, really, it should be assignments because there are three. So when you're looking at the to-do list, that's right here, okay? Um, these are the things that you have to complete this week. The black are things for our grades. The blacks are grades, are, are grades. The non-bold, non-bold, are mostly reading things that are not for a grade are important for you to do okay that you need to do that's expected of you to do because it has information a lot of this stuff will be assessed um throughout other classwork okay it's like for example you're reading these short stories which are important and these passages which are important because those are all a part of essay one all right so the black bill are things that are absolutely like due. Those are grades. And as in, I keep saying black, bold. The bold items are grades that week. The other items are things that you need to read, okay, that you need to know. Um, everything is always due. I mean, I say something like Sunday night, but it's not really due Sunday night because I'm not grading them at Monday morning, 1 a.m., okay? The earliest I will grade assignments will be Monday at 5 a.m., maybe, which probably won't happen either, unless, you know, I mean, I, I am usually up at that point, but usually I'm doing other things, not grading papers, okay? So, uh, hold on one second, y'all. I have a knock at my door. Pause this, y'all. Pause. One second. One second. One second. Sorry. I had a student turn in a project. Okay. Um, so this is our do list. Okay. Um, and so if you go to the week one folder, okay, we'll have all these things that we'll do, which I'm gonna go over each one in a moment. Okay. Uh, the first thing that I'm gonna go over is the syllabus, which you kind of should have already read this, but Again, I mean, like this live lecture is Monday. You, some of you just logged on, so you didn't watch the uh, the um, initial uh, course uh, lecture, which is fine. So with this, the things I want to highlight, um, you definitely need to read part one course competencies, uh, but I can summarize them. This class is about writing about what you've read. Okay, now the technical class is the technical title is like writing about literature. But when you leave this class, 
you don't have to have read anything specific. You don't have to have to know any actual content when you leave this course. The literature actually doesn't matter. Okay. What you this is a skills based course. So uh, when you leave this course, you need to leave with the ability to read on your own. Think about, analyze what you've read, and then construct a college level at MLA formatted essay where you talk about the ideas that you read and then explore them and maybe go and analyze them and go further, okay? That type of structure is what mirrors what you'll be doing in all of your other classes, okay? This is not a professional writing class. This is not a creative writing class. This is an academic writing class. This is writing for college. And in most of your, most of your other college classes, when you get to write papers, you will have had to have read something, done a research, and thought about it, and then you are writing an, an analysis or an explanation to your professor to demonstrate your knowledge, okay? And so we are preparing you to do that. This course is for to prepare you for your, your history classes, your psychology classes, um, your any other type of theoretical classes, economics class, where you have to, you have to research, you know, a, a depression or something that has happened economically and then write about it, okay? It's preparing you for all of your other courses. We, the English department, we are doing a solid for all of your other classes to get you ready to be able to perform in their courses, okay? So we're not doing creative writing in this class. We're not writing poetry. We're not writing short stories, okay? Um, when you, we're not taking tests over literature that, that, that you've read, okay? Now, there is a reading component, component of this class. You do, I am giving you assigned readings and you are writing papers over these certain pieces of, of readings. And that's because I am controlling what you're writing about. I, since, since I'm assigning you things that I've read, okay, then I know what that material is about. So when I am reading what you've written about the material, I am grading you for your writing ability, and I'm grading you on, your, on how well you comprehended that work, okay? Which again is important because if, I'm, if you're taking a history class and you are writing a paper a about um, William the Conqueror, okay, your history professor will know the facts about William the Conqueror. So what you are writing about has to be accurate, okay? So um, in this course, I use literature to test your ability to um, think and talk about ideas. And I need to know what that, what that literature is or what it was about, so that way I can grade how well you comprehended it. Okay, so um, the literature that I assign you to read is important to your assignments because I am assessing your ability to think about these things and to talk about them and to do it in a college level way, both grammatically, structurally, um, and analytically. Okay, um, but uh, when you leave this class, the only thing I really want you to take with you, that you need to take with you, is your ability to communicate. I hope that's very clear, okay? You will take another course later on in college uh, on this actually about literature, all right? But this course is focused primarily on writing, writing about what you have read, okay? Are there any questions up to this point? Okay. All right. Um, let's look at my additional policies. All right, this is my email address. Send me a message, um, and I'll get back to you uh, within a couple of days, okay? Um, now, listen, 
I am in person. I'm very, you know, jovial. Okay. Expressive. Um, oftentimes when I am reading your emails, okay, I'm reading them, reading them on my phone, uh, while I am in between maybe playing soccer with my kid or at the grocery store or cooking or doing any of these family or other, you know, classes and stuff. So um, I am, I in my responses, my email responses, I am not including all of these salutations and like, uh, hello, good day to you. I hope you're doing well. So here's the answer to your question. I'm kind of just much more short and to the point, okay? So none of that is attitude or laced with me being like, you know, little to you or whatever, right, you know? I'm just always replying back pretty much like in between other things and in haste. Okay. And so, um, if you get a very short response, like, yes. Okay. Sounds good. Or whatever. No, that's just because, uh, I, I'm not, pur I'm purposely not trying to, to construct a, a, a long winded, uh, personal response. I'm just getting straight to the point. Here's the answer to your question. Just what you need to do. Have you done this? Boom. Move on. Okay. Just know that. Like, you know, the benefit that y'all can email me anytime, the benefit that I can get your emails at any time is that you get a faster response. Okay. And so um, the trade off is that, like, I'm giving you a fast response that's, that, that's closer to like texting, not really email. It's more like a text. Okay. Like the, the same way in which, you, you know, someone would apply to it a quick text to you, right? That's the same way I'm doing with my emails, all right? All right? So um, please don't ever read into or overread my text as if like, oh, was he being rude? Or is he mad at me? Or is he, you know, blah, 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 whatever, okay? I'm just kind of like quick to the point, boom. Cool? Fantastic. All right, so here's the main issue with um, AI. Main thing I want to talk about is AI chat. You may not. Oh, Dylan, hey, okay. The textbook in the book store says loose leaf with archives code. Trevor, you said it's online. Is that okay? So, are you saying that you have this book? You didn't get it yet. Okay. All right. Well, if you're getting it, so this book, the page numbers in this book are the same page numbers as the book online. Okay. Cool. So you might get a physical book. You might get an online book. I'm going to show you what the online book link is online. I don't know if um, you have access to it until you put in a, a, a code. Okay. But there are readings from the textbook. So you either need the hard book, arguing about literature, or you need the, the online access code. Okay? Which I'm going to show you. Um, so listen, AI. Okay? Uh, you, this is my official policy. You may not use any AI chat resources for this class. We have... AI detecting software through turnitin.com. And there are several available online. If any of your work is suspected to be AI generated, then I'll run it through four of our detectors. And if it comes up positive in at least three different AI detectors, then it will not be accepted. Here's an example of a student's essay that had a high rating for AI detection. And these are the websites that were used to deem the paper as unacceptable. So the kid turned the paper in through turnitin.com. And 79% of the essay came up as AI, okay? Um, and there were these large chunks of paragraphs. So I took the that paragraph and I put it into sapling AI detector, and it came up as 0% human generated content, meaning it was all it was 100% AI. Then I put it through Crossplug AI detector. Red indicates AI generated content. This is all completely 
AI. Okay, so this is is this indicates that no good. Okay, then um, here are the consequences. The first time a paper is deemed unacceptable, then the student may rewrite the essay with a late penalty, resulting in the highest grade possible as a 70. The second time a paper is deemed unacceptable, then it will not be accepted and the grade will result in a zero. The third time this occurs, the student will be reported to the school and this infraction will be entered into their permanent college record. Okay, so um, make sure you don't use um, AI, okay? And you can always copy and paste your own writing into one of these websites to see if it comes up as AI generated. Just make sure that it doesn't, okay? So just understand that is the official policy, all right? Um, so um, just note that. Okay, um, this class, I'm gonna come back to the textbook. I'm gonna show you the link online, okay? Um, And I realize this right here, this is old. This textbook, this used to be embedded, but it no longer is. It is no longer embedded. It's definitely the arguing about literature book that it showed you. All right, so for the grade book, 75% um, of your grade is three assignments. Three assignments is 75% of your grade, okay? Uh, essay one, essay two, and essay three. All right, the short story analysis paper, the poetry analysis paper, and the independent memoir paper, okay? So uh, that means that the other 25% of your um, of your assignments um, are comprised of six classroom assignments. Six, okay? Well, in this class, there are a total of six plus three, nine. There's a total of nine assignments, the entirety of these uh, eight weeks. Okay, three of those though is 75% of your overall grade. Okay, so essentially this. Okay, your papers are the most important thing. You cannot you cannot pass this class and not like write a paper. You have to write a paper. The papers. Okay, um, and um, if you turn in um, a, a an assignment late, the way you know it's late is this: when I grade the assignments, put a grade in. And if your if your assignment is not turned in by the time that I grade it, it's a zero. Now the due date might be Monday, but I might not grade it until Thursday. Okay, if Monday comes and uh, you have no zero in the grade book, and Tuesday comes and you have no grade, there's no grade in the, in, in the grade book for that assignment, then I haven't graded it yet. Okay, so get it done and get it turned in. You, the assignment can be due Sunday night, but you might turn it in on Wednesday. But if I haven't started grading them until Thursday, it's no longer considered late. It's only late if I go to grade it and it's not there and you receive a zero in the grade book, okay? Now, the due dates that are listed on the, on the sheet right here, those are um, those are safety nets, okay? This work is due. This work is is due by the end of the twenty eighth to be safe. I could grade this work as early as the twenty ninth. More than likely, I won't. Okay, if you get turned in by the twenty eighth, you're safe. Um, guaranteed. Okay. After that, you're, you you are taking a chance. Now look, because I generally don't start grading until the middle of the week. Okay, um, you have a couple of days probably of leeway. But what I do not want though, I do not want emails asking for an extension. Okay, no extension emails. All right. If you don't think you can get the work turned in by a Sunday night, then just play your chances. Okay, get it turned in as soon as you can, all right? And if you get it turned in um, before I grade to it, I grade it, good. If you get a Z, if you see a zero in the grade book, still turn the work in and you can get a 70 on it, 
okay? But don't send me emails asking if you can get an extension because I'm, I, I'm just not going to grant those because I give you the leeway, all right? Um, now, uh, lay work will be accepted to, a, to an extent, okay? Um, all the work leading up to SA1 can be accepted late, as in after you receive a zero, up until the point of SA1 being turned in, okay? So, for example, this assignment right here, the finding sources assignment that I'm going to talk about today. Uh, this is due, technically, Sunday night. But let's say next, next uh, Tuesday I'm grading them. Yours is not turned in yet, so you get a zero. You can turn in this assignment late up until... The 11th, up until you submit SA1. Once you submit SA1, once SA1 is due, I'm not taking any of these late assignments for a grade, okay? They're, the zero is permanent, all right? Um, the only assignment you have for, uh, for, the, for, for the next unit, for SA2 unit, is an outline, okay? Once, uh, if you have a zero for the outline, for SA, for the SA2 outline, you cannot turn this outline in after you've submitted SA2. I'm not taking it, okay? So once SA2 is submitted, then I, I will no longer be, be accepting these outlines, which means that like at the end of the, the semester, you cannot submit SA3 and then turn in the SA2 outline, the SA3 outline, the SA1 outline, okay? Those, those will be permanent zeros, all right? So, make sure that you get your stuff done pretty much on time um, and you accept whatever you're given, okay? All right. Okay, let's move on. So that, that's my syllabus and my additional policies. Are there any additional questions about that? Okay. Um, so for week one, listen, you need to, now that we've covered the syllabus, um, and the AI policy, you need to take the welcome quiz. You should do this today, all right? Um, on you, this is due, this is the only assignment that's ever due at a weird time. This is absolutely due Friday, May 26th. The welcome quiz has to be done before 1 a.m. Saturday, all right? It needs to be done by May 26th because on the 27th, I have to go in Look at see who who did not complete the welcome quiz, and then I have to drop you from the course. Okay, if I wait till Sunday or even Monday, I get yelled at by my bosses. I have to put this in on uh on Saturday night. Okay, Saturday at some point. I'm gonna wake up Saturday and I'm gonna look to see who's taking the quiz, and then those who have not taken this quiz, I'm gonna enter you in as a no show. Okay, so you have to take that quiz. Right, do it today, do it as soon as I'm over. You gotta take the welcome quiz. All right, okay. Any questions about that? <laughs> okay, all right. So, um, you're writing papers, you're gonna write a, a paper about short stories. So, I'm gonna go over those short stories today. I'm gonna tell you the ones that, that they're on. You're gonna be writing an essay too about poetry, about this peck of poems that you get to pick from. I'm gonna go over that, okay, with you, uh, whenever it gets time for that. But the third paper you are writing is about a memoir, okay? A book that you've read, all right? So um, I'm providing you a list of memoirs that I've read, and you have to pick one of these to read these next uh, couple of weeks, okay? You have, six, you have five weeks to read this book before we start writing essay three, okay? You will need to pick one of the books to read, and you are using you're picking one of these books because this is my control. I've read all these memoirs, so I know I know them real well. And so when I'm reading what you are writing about, I know if it's accurate or not. Okay. So select this document right here. Oh yeah. And here are all the memoirs that you the memoirs that you can choose from. Now, you will have to choose 
as I'm talking about this, uh, keep this in mind, you'll have to choose this this week, okay? Because there is a memoir form that you have to fill out for a grade. You have to fill this, once you pick one of these memoirs to read, you have to fill this out. You don't actually have to have, have, have the copy yet, but you need to decide which one you want to read. Okay, so I'm bringing, I'm, I'm finishing this one right now. This one is really good. Uh, I'm glad my mom died by Jeanette McCurdy. I read, I, I wrote a little, I wrote a little description of kind of the bottom of each of these and what issues they cover. Okay. So you can read those yourself. I won't necessarily go through all those, but uh, I will at least state the titles of the books for you. Uh, I'm glad my mom died by Jeanette McCurdy. Uh, the Stranger in the Woods by Michael Finkel. Uh, it's, it's about a hermit. It's really good. Uh, I mean, all these are really good. I read, I have them all. Uh, Girl Decoded by Rana L. I can't really pronounce her name. Okay, she's Egyptian. Um, Between the World and Me by Tanessi Coates. Good guy. Uh, the Brainwashing of My Dad by Jen Cinco. Uh, my Body by Emily Rajeska. Righteous There's too many syllables. Sorry. Uh, the Awkward Thoughts of W. Kamal Bell. I hope maybe you're recognizing some of these people. Um, I hope while you come across someone, you're like, oh, okay, yeah, that person. American Sniper by Chris Kyle. As a Woman by Paula Stone Williams. This is a woman, um, this is a, about a trans woman. Um, and about her life uh, being her her former self, Paul, and then also transitioning to Paula. Very interesting book. The Misadventures of Awkward Black Girl by Issa Rae. If you like her show, uh oh. Hold on. Hold on. I have guests. Hold on one second. Yeah. Uh, the the so what, give me a typical lesson that you teach them about what? Are they, what? They're right there. They're on there now? They're on there right now. Oh, wow. Are they listening? I think they're listening. Oh, I hope they're listening. It's all good. Okay, so uh, joys of doing these live uh, with actual people around. Okay, so um, if you watched, um, she, has a, she has a show. Issa Rae has a show on on HBO, which is Insecure. That's it. Have you have, have any of you seen Insecure on HBO? It's really good. So that's her show. Um, and then this is, but this is a book that she wrote. Uh, Educated by Tara Westover. Friends, Lovers, and Big Terrible Thing by Matthew Perry. This book, I'll tell you what, um, this, this is probably the most truest book written about addiction. Okay. Uh, if you are like, oh my God, Matthew Perry, I love Friends. And you just want to hear about friends. This is not the book. Okay. This book is about addiction. And I think that like anybody who's ever had someone who ever had an addict in their life should read this book in order to better understand them. Okay. So um, powerful. And then Broken Horses um, by Brandy Carlisle. Okay. But like, again, I wrote, I wrote a little description, um, some longer than others. Under, underneath, underneath each book, okay? So uh, please um, read through those and pick a book that sounds great to you, okay? And then when you do, you will do this uh, memoir form, okay? And I mean, I can actually show it to you. Look, these are, these are the memoirs to choose from, okay? And so uh, question one is select the title that you will read, okay? And then what about this book makes, makes you want to read it? And you'll save and submit. There's no right or wrong answer here. This is a this is a uh, completion grade. You do it and you get the grade. 
you don't take it, you don't answer it, then you don't. This way it tells me, you know, that like you've, it helps me to hold you accountable that you've actually picked a book out that you plan on reading, okay? And again, I want you to pick one that is really interesting to you, okay? I want you to want to read it. Um, also, you could also listen to them. I listen to many of these. Um, I'm reading McCurdy's. I read Finkel's. Uh, Rana, she she reads her own on Audible, even though, yeah, I listen to it. I listen to her book. Um, the Brain Rush of My Dad. Let's see here. Um, Cobb Bell, I think he narrates his own book. Um, Itza Ray, she narrates her own book. I listen to her book on Audible. Um, Tara does her own book. I listen to that one. Matthew Perry. Oh, yeah, I listen to that one on Audible as well. Um, oh, and Brandy Carlisle's. Now, Brandy Carlisle's is a, is a musician. So if you listen to her book, she also sings to you some throughout it. It's really nice. Okay. I love Audible. If you, if you don't have Audible, uh, you can do a one month for free. Um, and then, so you could like get a book and listen to it and then quit. All right. Nothing wrong with that. Now you don't want to, the only thing though, is that you don't want to fully rely on just the audible version of the book because, uh, you will have to like, uh, uh use quotes from your book in your paper. Okay. And your book that you're choosing, uh, the thing that you're going to be writing about in your paper is about the issues. Not a, you're not doing a book report on what it's what you know their story. You are talking about issues in your book. So like I've under each of these, I've discussed. I have um, wrote out some of the issues discussed in this book. Like this book deals with manipulative parents, OCD, anorexia, and bulimia. Okay, this book deals with issues of antisocialism, survivalism, personality disorders, and uh, Topic of crime and punishment, and so forth, so forth, <laughs> so forth. This one deals with sexism, entrepreneurialism, capitalism, and immigration. So, you know, each book has some different topics that it covers, all right? You are going to be discussing the topics using examples from the book. So you probably need to quote. So you need to, once you, just, you pick which book you want, then you know, start reading it or listening to it, but also get a copy. Either check it out from the library um, or purchase it from Amazon, however you want to do it, okay? All right, so make sure that y'all do that. That is a requirement for this week. And I'm very excited to see what, what books you choose, okay? Because again, I've read all those books. I'm, I'm very excited about those books. Um, and uh, it was hard for me to pick just a small number of them, okay? So I picked those, and I think that, like, you'll enjoy those. There should be one that you enjoy, okay? All right. Um, now, before you can do this assignment, the library research assignment, you have to take the, the MLA formatting and documentation quiz. In the school, Byers, me, Mr. Byers, I did not write this quiz, and I'm not required. I am not the one that's making you take it. The school is making you do it. And the school is making you score at least an 80% on it, okay? <laughs> what? I know. If you don't score at least an 80%, you can't move on. It won't let you. It'll be, it's locked. So, in order to help you with that, okay, I put out all the questions. I don't think other teachers are doing this. I think only this guy is doing it. So, all of you should... You know, I mean, you know, praise me already for this, okay? Um, I, here are all the questions. Here are the 15 questions of, of, of the test, okay? I know. Thank you. Thank you. I Thank you, okay? I, I do what I can. I do what I can, all right? These are the 15 questions uh, that the, the quiz goes over, okay? I am pretty sure one of those is wrong. Okay, so I, I might end up having to give everyone at least one point, what, like five points free, okay? But if you go ahead and you make sure that you can answer all these questions, you can answer all these questions, okay? Before you take the quiz, that'd be great. And here's another thing. I don't want you to take the quiz first and just see, you know, see, 
you get. See what you get. Okay. Because um, I'm pretty sure that I cannot change uh, how often you, you take this quiz. Can I? I feel like in the past I couldn't. Let me see this. Edit test options. Um, yes. Multiple attempts. Okay. Multiple attempts. Okay. I'll just allow unlimited attempts. That'll make it a lot easier. Okay. I don't. Okay. So, um, you can take the quiz, see if you do poorly on it, and retake it. Hopefully, by me changing that option, I won't have to manually go in and delete your previous attempt, okay? Um, but it'll be best for you to first kind of like look through those questions to see if you know how to answer them. And it is multiple choice, so which makes it kind of annoying because even if you know how to answer it, uh, it has to be like precisely one of those four options. So like, while you might have answered it this way, it might be the answer choice might be worded oddly and you have to figure out which one's correct, okay? So um, do that next, because listen, I have students, I've had students in the past waiting till Sunday to do all of their work, Sunday. And then they cannot get past the MLA things. And, you know, I'll get all these emails on a Sunday saying, hey, can you please unlock it? And I'm like, I'm not at my computer. I I cannot unlock it unless I'm at my computer, but I'm out doing this or that, blah, 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 right? And so then, because they don't have, they can't get access to the library research assignment until the, the quiz is completed with an 80% or higher, um, it keeps them from being able to turn their stuff in on time. And it's like a snowball effect. It's like really annoying, all right? So, don't wait until Sunday to do this MLA formatting quiz, all right? You really should do the welcome quiz like a, a day and then the MLA quiz today or tomorrow as soon as you can, okay? Before you're able to move on to the library research assignment. Okay. Questions? Cool. Let's look. Um, so I'll hit the textbook right now because if you notice on your list of assignments, we have readings, okay? Read, where are you going, where have you been? In textbook page 1015, okay? So if you have the, the actual hard copy and you go to page 1000 and 15, then you get to, oh my God, the story. Where are you going? Where have you been? What? What? Um, and then if you have the online textbook, look, I have the link here, Achieve eBook, okay? When you click this, I don't know what your screen's gonna say. I don't know if your screen's gonna say, need passcode, this is a new book. This is all new, okay? Um, this is a whole new course, pretty much, um, with new stuff. Uh, and so I don't know if yours is gonna take you here or if it's gonna say, what is your passcode code? What is your, what is your entry code? Whatever, I don't know. Let's just say everything's all kosher and you get to this page right here and it looks like this, okay? Are you, are you, you had a passcode and you enter it in, now you have access to the book, whatever it is, okay? You type in, 1015, hit enter, and it will take you to the story, okay? Whatever is listed here, it will take you there, okay? Story, read Hills Like White Elephants, uploaded document in week one folder, okay? So you go back to weekly folders, you go down to week one, and then, uh, boom, hills like white elephants. Click on that, that's a Word document. And you can read the story, okay? Um, same thing here, it says, uh, story of an hour by Kate Chopin, uploaded in week one folder, okay? Here, there it is, story of an hour. Read that. Um, here it says, read the ecstasy of consent. Read that. 
Read when yes really means yes. Pages this. So 543 to 547. So you go to your online textbook. Can the thing move? Thank you. 547. And then scroll down a little bit. Okay. When yes really means yes. Okay. So the things that you are reading right now, okay, they um, are dealing with um, issues of, of um, I guess, tradition, I guess you call them like feminist issues, okay? Um, the, 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 the main characters that you're reading are, are female characters, and it's about them dealing with essentially the men in their life, okay? And the men can be representative of like society, okay? Um, so like these readings are important because uh, these short stories that you're reading, uh, they are going to be uh, the topics of essay one that you're gonna that you're gonna write about, okay? Um, where are you going? Where have you been? It was like white elephants, story of an hour, and then there's an optional story, okay? This story is it's in the textbook it's a part of of these uh, it's within the same pages of um these two um nonfiction pieces okay and it's called cat person okay but cat person is an optional story okay um because it is about Kayla left the meeting um Cat person is about a girl's, a woman's, uh, a 20 year old woman's experience with uh, this guy and like hooking up with him. Okay. And when I read it, <laughs> um, I myself got, uh, uh, I was embarrassed reading it. Okay. Cause it is, it is pretty uh, graphic. Okay. Um, in terms of sexual content. Okay. If they made this, they adapted this to a um to a you know film or or a uh mini movie okay um it would definitely be tv ma or r okay um so i'm not requiring you to read this uh it like i said it is within the same pages of the ecstasy of consent and yes really means yes and it does fit very well on the same themes as where you're going, where have you been? Hills like white elephants in the story of an hour. Okay. Um, but at the same time, I am not requiring you to read it because some people, um, some people are just, you know, uncomfortable with that kind of stuff. Um, while other people are like, yes, <laughs> this is what I've been waiting to read my entire, you know, life. Okay. So you can read it. If you want to read it, I mean, it's it's in the college textbook, okay? Um, and uh, some people say, hey, that's what college is about. It's about reading things that, and talking about things that you can't talk about and read about in in high school, okay? Um, other people though, they're not they're not comfortable with with, with stuff that's as uh, graphically detailed, okay? So that's up to you. It's um it's not a story that um is required, uh. For essay one, because essay one, you can write about um, a couple of these stories. You can write a long paper about one of them. It'll be really hard to write your paper on just one story just because of how long your paper one has to be. So I'm having you write about a couple of different stories. <clears throat> but between where are you going, where have you been, it's like White Elephants, The Story of an Hour, and Cat Person, that's four stories. And you only have to write about one to three of them. Okay. So... If you choose not to read Cat Person, then uh, there will be no penalty to that. Okay, but since it's already there, it's part. It's uh, it's within this chapter. You know, I'm offering it up to you if you want to read it. Okay, great. Um, so the last thing I want to talk about is is this assignment, the Finding Sources assignment. Your finding sources assignment is really important to essay one because you are going to be using these sources from this assignment for essay one. Okay. So let's look at this assignment. It's located right here. Library research assignment and example. This is in 
the week one, May 22nd through May 28th. And I know I'm I'm going beyond one hour. Sorry, uh, this this uh, is particularly longer than usual. Okay, and so uh, because it's the first it's the first week. Okay, and so I had all to cover. Okay, so for this assignment, um, this assignment is directly related to your first essay and to the stories we'll be reading for unit one. If you have not watched the lecture for week one, then you need to do that before continuing on with this assignment because in the lecture one, I go over everything you need to know in order to do this assignment correctly. Ha, like right now, okay? Um, you are going to have to conduct research online and in the library databases on the following topics. Uh, the patriarchy, what is the patriarchy? Uh, two, how is sex weaponized against women? Sex, um, both physical and also just gender, their, their, their biological sex, being a woman. Um, and then three, how gaslighting is used to manipulate women. You will need to find at least one source from the online library databases, which I'm going to show you, and at least one article from a reliable magazine or news source. Any of the following are acceptable. These are the sources that I'd like for you to stick to outside of the online library, okay? When, when using Google, I'll show you in a moment, okay? These are good sources that you may use. You may not use sources from online encyclopedias, like Wikipedia, or dictionaries, or literature guides, like SparkNotes, ClipNotes, LibGuides, or news sources that are too far one-sided, like Fox News, The Daily Wire, or CNN. You're going to include the proper citation in MLA formatting and then a summary of what the article discusses. You may not use any type of AI chat for this. Everything needs to be original. I want your submission to be in a Word document or a downloaded Google Doc. Do not post a web address link or a shared copy. It needs to be a file that you upload here. Your submission has to be in proper MLA formatting. It needs to be headed correctly spaced and your answers need to be your original words and written in complete sentences. Submissions that have poor grammar, formatting, and communication will receive a poor grade. Okay. Well, I provided here a full example. Okay. I did this assignment myself. I literally uh, did it. Uh, so you know for solidarity and to show you exactly the way it needs to be looked, the way it should look. Okay. This right here is what you're going to be essentially doing. Not essentially, this is exactly what you're going to be doing, okay? You're going to have a properly MLA formatted document with your last name and page numbers correctly inserted in. You're going to have your your first and last name, my name, Mr. Byers, for the, the class, English 1102, and the date, January 16, 2023, which actually is not right. <laughs> You need to uh, let's put the due date May. What is that? 26, no, May 28th, 20, library assignment. Okay, um, your whole paper is going to be correctly formatted. Paragraph zero zero double. See that zero zero double zero zero double. You are going to have the citation, which I'll show you in a moment how to do. It has what's called a hanging indent. The first line starts all the way to the far left, but then the subsequent line is indented. And then you're going to have a summary of the article. In this article, someone discusses how America is ruled by men. The article does acknowledge how there is a positive trend happening where women are gaining power and status, blah, 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 Okay? And then you're going to have your next source. Correctly formatted. Last names. Okay, title of the articles, where it came from. All right? And then some a paragraph about what the article is about. And then you're going to have your third one. Cynthia Stark. Gaslighting, misogyny, and psychological oppression. Okay. And a paragraph. They're going to be organized based upon alphabetical last name as works cited pages to be done. So your first one, so like 
I gave you three things to research, these three, but your sources don't have to follow in that order. They shouldn't. It should be followed in alphabetical order. So, Cohen, C comes first, C comes before K, and K comes before S, okay? Those are the things that I'm going to grade you on. Your assignment look just like mine. I'm providing you an example so you can mirror it, okay? Now, when you start yours, again, you need to have it, it needs to be put in proper MLA formatting, okay? So the first thing you do is page numbers. You go to insert, you go to page numbers, top of the page, and they should be on the far right side. And then next to your name, in all caps, should be your last name. Okay. See, they're inserted. They're not, I didn't just type my last name and put a page number. Because now when, when they're inserted correctly, every new page I add, it will automatically change this number. Okay, it will automatically do it. Then before I type, I go to paragraph and I make sure this says this is zero, zero, double, zero, zero, double, zero, zero, double. Okay. And then I click this justify. My paper should be justified. Okay. So now, now I type my first and last name. Then you type your instructor name, the class name, and then due date. Then you go to center and you type the title. Whoopsies, excuse me, title of the assignment. Okay. What I've just created for you here is an MLA template. Uh, this is summer. Oops. Uh, I want to name it that. I wanted to name it uh, MLA template. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to post this for you so you can have it in the case you know you need it. Okay. Now we start doing research. So you need to have one, at least one thing from the online library, um, and the online library database, and at least one from the article from a reliable magazine or news source. And then you can mix it up, third one, whatever. Okay. So uh, what we're gonna do is go to your apps, go to the library. Yeah, it's me. Okay. Um, and then go to libguides and databases. Okay. Now I I like to just do EBSCO. Let me see here. Academic search complete. This one EBSCO. Okay, and then here, you know, we can type in something like uh, male dominated. Okay, uh, and then when you, you should click on always full text. Okay, that's that way you get, you get the actual do, uh, document. Okay. And then you look for things that seem like uh, 
Um, so like here, I think I wrote on here the patriarchy, okay. Patriarchy. Um, and you might find something that sounds good to you, okay? Um, you can also, when you're searching, you can go to things like this, like academic journals if you wanted to. You can go to subject, um, social aspects maybe, okay? And let's just say um, you're like, oh, this one, this, this one's not so good. Training the patriarchy, okay. Well, let's say you you click on the PDF full text. And you read it and you get some good information about what the patriarchy is, okay. And you wanna use this, okay. Then you come over here one of these is site. Let's see if this, this is it. I don't want to do that. No. Nope. I just did that one. Okay, right here. This little paper thing is citation format. You go over here, scroll down to MLA, boom, and this is the proper citation for it. Highlight it, copy it, go to your your page right here, paste it. Uh, you want to make sure it's all white there. Okay. Uh, you don't want to have that that gray background. Heck no. There we go. Okay. It needs to be double spaced. So when you go back up to paragraph, double, zero. And now we need the hanging indent, see? See how it has the, this longer indent there and shorter one there? So the way you do that, look, if you go to this second line and hit tab, the whole thing pushes forward. That's the problem. So instead, what you do is you go to the end of the first line, end of it, see, cursor, hit tab, boom, does it. And now you provide a, an original summary of the article. You read the article and provide a summary of it, okay? Now, let's say you want to find an article from one of these. Okay, the Atlantic to me is, is probably the best. I love the Atlantic, okay? Um, but maybe you're like, oh, no, I wanna do something else, okay? In magazine sounds interesting, okay? So um, you do something like, uh, let's see here, gender weaponized against women, M Magazine. Okay, M Magazine, Tools of the Patriarchy, the Weaponization of Hair. How confidence is weaponized against women? Oh, that's pretty interesting. That's Harvard Business Review. That's all right. Anybody at Harvard? <laughs> yeah, sign me up, okay? Um, you could also do something like, let's see, uh, again, The Atlantic, okay? You can do, Gaslighting. Gaslighting. Women. The Atlantic. Are you using gaslight correctly? Okay. Um, and if something comes up, cool. If it doesn't uh, come up, then that's a problem. All right. Uh, women are, are calling out medical gaslighting. That might be, might be interesting. Okay. The New York Times, that's okay. You find an article, and again, um, you do the same thing. Now, it, the um, let's say, let's say you read this, 
No, that's Facebook. <laughs> that's the wrong one. No, that's site Facebook. Let's say uh, the New York Times one. Where, where, where was it? Oh, it went too far. Okay, women are calling out medical gaslighting. Okay, New York Times. Do you want to use this? Um, and you know how to cite it. Okay. See, did I use, did I, have I encrypted this tool yet? No. Okay. We're going to use easybib.com. Easybib.com. Great source used to help you cite, uh, and provide a, um, a citation. I will this right here in the weekly folders, EasyBib. I think EasyBib is great. Now, here's the link. Okay, you can use e EasyBib. So what you do is with EasyBib, you're like, okay, I'm going to cite a website. Here's the website right here, the New York Times. Okay. Um, it's free, usually a bunch of videos, it's annoying, but you know what, it's free. Okay. You do this, you hit search, it pops up, you hit site. Okay. You hit uh, continue. If anything pops up where it's like it's missing something, women are calling out medical gaslighting, that's the name of the article, first name, uh, yep, that's her name, all of that's correct, all of that's correct, okay, all that's correct, complete citation, view sponsored message, you're gonna view a message, it's free, then what's gonna, what's gonna happen is um, they're gonna give you the citation. And all you gotta do is copy it and then Bring it over to yours, paste it. That's not it. We're gonna imagine that this is, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll pretend this is the citation while it's actually doing it. Oh, let's see, we got two seconds. Boom. All right, there it is. You can hit uh, copy. Go back to your thing and paste it. Now it's not formatted. You need to highlight it, paragraph, double, zero, zero, and then you're good. And now you read the article and you write, oopsies, write an original summary of the article. And that's it. Okay. And then you do one more, either online library or through internet research okay and then when you're done make sure that you submit it to the uh, assignment dropbox all right i will be grading you on your on your mla formatting i'll be grading you on uh and on your summary skills and you know your grammar and formatting and communication so once you're done with that stuff, then you just read the stories. You read Tales Like White Elephants, you, you read the story of an hour, you go to the textbook, um, you read Where Are You Going, Where Have You Been? You read, um, if you want to read uh, Cat Person, read Cat Person, and then read When Yes Really Means Yes, okay? There's a lot of reading, there's a lot of reading, but this that's, that's part of it, because you're gonna be, the more you read, the more ideas you have to write about, okay? Stephen King said, you can't be a good writer if you're not a good reader, okay? And I'm telling you that here, that the, the easiest way to write a paper is if you have read a lot and then you have a lot to say, okay? All right, are there any questions? This wraps up pretty much all the things I wanted to talk about. This is a long first lecture. This is like an hour and a half. I'm, so, I'm sorry, okay, they all won't be this big. Or if they are this long, I'll actually be cutting them up into smaller chunks. 
Well, are there any questions though? No. Okay. So if there are, after everyone watches this and you want to email me questions, do it. I might give you a short response, but just know that's just the way I communicate through email. Okay? Nothing personal. Okay. All right. I hope you've enjoyed this and um i'll post i'm gonna post another lecture next week on monday and then uh we will have a live lecture on that following friday okay all righty y'all take it easy uh, bye bye now